Yo, what's up boys? I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Beta here with the Arachnocurse Phobia Bold Guide or my version on playing Oricardi's Occultist a different way with the new Anathema Unique Ring. This ring makes our total curse count to be equal to our maximum power charges so we have a total of four curses with four maximum power charges. To make the bold more unique I stack up to seven auras for defensive and offensive purposes via almost all of our gear being unique so that ensures we are able to reach 18 million pinnacle boss DPS within a respectable budget of around about 15 divans and 4 divans without the Almanamu's gaze jewel while having a 100k effective hit pool. When we do get hit hard, you are able to use your life flask to recover large amounts of energy shield from the keystone Supreme Decadence. This ensures the build can do all of the content including all the invitations, endgame bossing and map juicing too. For uber bossing or 100% delirious content you'll be looking at investing around about 50 divans with the squire and this outperforms most Arakali builds with around about 30 million uber pinnacle boss dps considering the low amount of investment. Leveling is super quick and easy with spark up until around about level 73 where you'll transition the entire build but more on that later. Before we continue, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay updated with my latest videos and live streams that I do right here on YouTube. Also, drop a like on the video and share it should it pique your arachnocurse phobia senses. If you struggle with anything, then please join my community discord and drop a question under the help section. To summarize the entire build, you summon 20 spiders that use the Viper Strike skill as their main attack and in order to deliver the most damage, we focus on increasing the poison damage by stacking up attack speed from multi-strike, flesh offering, minions here the whispers for 50% increased attack speed and damage with haste giving a total of 5 attacks per second. The spiders are then able to ramp up the amount of poisons really really quickly. To scale the damage an Amanamu's gaze jewel gives a 30% more damage over time multiplier Melee physical for 49% more poison damage with hits, unbound ailments for the increased ailments effect, along with malevolence for 20% more damage over time, and increased skill effect with a despair curse, of course, to reduce enemy chaos resistance by 30% plus. We also achieve a ridiculous amount of 480% increased minion damage from three large cluster jewels to boost the overall chaos and physical damage but mostly the poison DPS of the build. The cherry on top here is having 15 weather debuffs from totems for that extra 90% increased chaos damage taken. This is all amazing for bossing, but for mapping, being an occultist, we gain awesome benefits such as profane bloom to blow up packs of enemies for smooth mapping, and enemies have 100% reduced regeneration rate and 20% reduced chaos resistance too. In order to blow up enemies, a profane proxy and skitterbots is used to apply temporal chains on enemies near it instead of its chill aura, so effects expire slower while reducing action speed. Our other two curses are punishments for increased damage taken while the enemies are on low life, which is from 50% or below, and in feeble, so bosses deal much less damage to us of course. Speaking of less damage though, for our defenses, we reserve all of our life with Prism Guardian to fit in purity of elements for a large amount of resistances and ailments immunity, along with our determination with four endurance charges boosting physical mitigation through the roof and grace to dodge attacks as we aren't block focused that's paired with minions blinding on hits. As we reserve all of our life as well with these three auras, a chevron's wrappings is utilized to ensure chaos damage does not bypass our energy shield that we have around about five to six thousand of from discipline, the skill tree and our gear too. Lastly, Molten Shell or the Vol version works as an oh shit button alongside our life potion to prevent and recover from damage quickly thanks to supreme decadence. Extra recovery comes from our ascendancy, Divine Shield Keystone for physical damage uh, prevention, which is then regenerated as Energy Shield. And then lastly, our Ghost Dance Keystone for Ghost Shrouds that recover around about 300 Energy Shield each time you are hit. The build is really flexible, as you can replace many of the gems, jewels, or gear to fit your own means to clearing content, but at a loss of damage most likely. To summon your spiders, it's really, really simple. 
First, you'll desecrate three times on yourself. Channel Divine Ire, and then smack your Writhing Jar Flask. This will sometimes only summon about 18, but most of the time, 20 spiders each time. The build playstyle is somewhat difficult at first, while having all of your spiders out at a time, while timing the resummons, but the trick, right, is that while mapping, is to just throw Desecrate on top of packs of enemies, and then the spiders will auto-refresh their durations, and on bossing, this can also apply with fights that give you adds to kill, but obviously it's not guaranteed. Managing your wither totems with flesh offering uptime and having to curse on bosses is vital to delivering maximum damage and don't forget to use your withering jar to resummon your spiders. That is very important. Please don't forget it. We also have Vol Haste to speed up mapping or bossing with Vol Molten Strikes to prevent damage, so do not hesitate to use them when it's needed. The pros of the build is it's really fun, smooth clear speed from blowing up packs of enemies. It's easily achievable uh, gearing without the Amanamu's Gaze Jewel. And it's also relaxed while being aware as you're not exactly a tank to take balls to the face. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's also an awesome unique way to play Arakali's Occultist that delivers massive damage at half the normal budget that you would normally invest into the build. The spider's AI is also excellent, but they can get stuck in confined maps like Vol Temple sometimes on, on some of the uh, ridges, which can be a little bit annoying. Otherwise, the build is a breeze in Sanctum runs and bossing as mechanics are your only focus, so it's very, very smooth and chilled. In terms of the cons of the build, it's that it's not a max block build and it is vulnerable to big hits or degens along with um, critical strikes as well. So that can be a killer for the build. It's also pretty expensive due to the Amanamo's Gaze Jewel price at this very moment, but I do expect it to drop. And obviously we cannot do any uber content with the current states. You will need a Squire Shield as the damage is poor for ubers in this uh, form of the build. And then lastly for the cons, it's a minion build, which could seem to be boring as you deal no damage yourself. First of all, I just want to go through the uh, path of building real quick that I have set up for you guys. I've got leveling trees all the way from Act 1 right down until Act 10. And then obviously when you should switch, which is at level 73. And then at 86, the ideal setup. And then obviously once you get to around about level 95, this is where you would want to be. The most important part in the uh, path of building is of course over here in the notes section whereby I have got each act broken down for you um, with your leveling gems and what you should switch out for and when and the ideal time to uh, switch over to using Oracalis which is at around about level 60. And then of course I have included some uh, leveling uniques here for you should you want to make it a little bit quicker through the acts. And then the gearing priorities here as well, which is from the most important, well, should I say the cheapest way to uh, start gearing all the way through until the most expensive. And then I've also included trade links for you, should you be a little bit lazy like I am, just to make things a bit easier for each of the items as well. In the end game uh, path of building two, I have also got notes over here for your gearing priority, along with the trade links too, um, for when you would want to grab the uh, Squire shield and take the build way further than what I actually did and get some uber bossing done. Both of these path of buildings will be down below in the description for you, should you want them right now. Next up, I just want to go through the Pantheon real quick, which is ideal for mapping and bossing, how, how I've found it to be ideal. So Soul of Lunaris is perfect for mapping as there's all his enemies around you, giving you physical uh, damage reduction and movement speed. And then obviously you have a slight chance to avoid projectiles, but more importantly here for the 6% reduced elemental damage taken and to avoid all projectiles that have changed, this makes mapping very, very smooth. Of course, for bossing, you would most likely want to grab Soul of Solaris for the uh, extra fizz reduction and the reduced elemental damage taken if you haven't been hit, although you do get hit pretty often, so that one's not so good. And the more important one here would be take no extra damage from critical strikes if you were recently crit and 
then for your minor guard should be Soul of Rizlatha. And the reason why this is really good for this build is because your life flasks gain three charges every three seconds if you haven't used one yet. And this counts for both the Wrathing Jar and for your Divine Life Flask. So you can always be able to summon your spiders without having to worry about anything. And then obviously the increased life recovery from flasks when used on low life is super good here because we are always low life. We gain that extra benefit. Next up, we are the Occultist and you should pick up Profane Bloom first thing. Although I kind of reckon that getting Void Beacon for normal lab will be the ideal thing going through the acts. What Void Beacon does is it gives nearby enemies have reduced chaos resistance and their regeneration is also reduced, meaning that those pesky little life regen mobs that you would normally encounter, they mean literally nothing to this build. And then of course for your cruel lab, you must go for Profane Bloom. So then any cursed enemies you kill have a 50% chance to explode, dealing one fourth of their total life pool. For your Merciless Lab, you must pick up Withering Presence. For the Chaos Resistance, this is very important for when you transition at level 73. And then the uh, more Chaos Damage and the Withered doesn't apply for the Bolded in any way, as the Wither stacks are very, very slow. For your very last lab, you must pick up Vile Bastion. This is incredible for mapping as it provides you with a shitload of uh, regeneration. Also, you cannot be stunned while you have Energy Shield. This is really good so you do not get stun locked in place as, of course, we do not run Soul of the Brown King. Okay, now just to quickly run over the gear that I have got on the build. Of course, it's the Aurakali's Fang for summoning your spiders and then the Ancient Skull Helmets over here. This makes it so that each time your minions deal their critical strike chance, which they have 11% of, and due to them having really high attack speed, this will pretty much be up permanently. Um, what happens here is that when your spiders deal a critical strike chance, they have 50% increased attack speed and damage, while taking 20% of their maximum life as chaos damage. However, because the spiders are immortal to damage, this doesn't apply at all. And then of course, it does give us some extra minion damage. I do just want to quickly note over here that the enchant that I'm running here with Detonate Dead, I was trying to get Flesh Offering has uh, increased attack and cost speed while it's, while it's up, but I was unable to uh, get that, which you will see in the Uber Path of Building, of course. And then for the shield is the one and only Prism Guardian here in order for us to have an extra three auras that we reserve on our life. It also gives a little bit of dexterity, which is very valuable to this build as we are uh, starved on dexterity. And of course, a huge chunk of elemental resistances, super, super powerful. And then for the boots is just some track once again for some dexterity, mostly because it provides a huge amount of energy shield here. And also for the 30% uh, movement speed is really, really good. And of course, enemies cannot leech life from you, which is a bonus. And then for your belt is just a darkness enthroned with the two ghastly art jewels. Mainly they should have physical uh, damage to minions, energy shield, and minions have accuracy rating. This is very, very important for uh, bossing. Otherwise, early on, the accuracy rating is probably not even needed. And then my gloves is just a rare pair, the actual only rare uh, that the build does end up utilizing here. And I've just got while a enemy is in, while a unique enemy is in your presence, minions deal increased damage. Really, really good. And withered you inflict expires 10% slower. This is also good, seeing as though we have 15 wither stacks. And uh, how you come about doing these gloves is what you'll want to do is get a fractured base. Preferably between 80 to 90% increased energy shield or even 100% on sorcerer gloves. This makes it easier on landing some decent rolls. What you are looking for is to land dexterity and pretty much chaos resistance would be a bonus here. But what you're really looking for is to land dexterity along with your minions deal increased damage. So you use either screaming, shrieking or deafening essences of fear on them. Pretty much just uh, spam away at it you see. And until you hit dexterity, you can also craft on something else, maybe even dexterity. See, right here, we've got T1 uh, lightning rays, so forth. And then, of course, you must use your embers for the uh, implicits. For your ring, 
which must be on the left ring slot here is the profane proxy. Um, this makes it so that temporal chains is applied instead of the skitter boss's uh, chilling aura. It also gives three to level of the temporal chains, slowing enemies down even more for us. And probably the most important unique, I would say, of the bolt is the anathema right here. Um, so your curse limit is equal to your maximum power charges. And as you naturally have three maximum power charges and this extra one over here, which is overcharge, we have four maximum power charges, meaning we are then able to apply four curses. And then um, for your amulet must be a presence of Cheyula. This gives some extra energy shield from your maximum life, a massive chunk of chaos resistance as well, and a little bit of rarity just to help you drop a few more uniques or maybe a spicy mage blood there during mapping. Who even knows? Anything is possible in this game, right? And then obviously for your anoint, you must have charisma here for the increased mana reservation efficiency of skills and the increased effect of non-curse auras. Your chest piece, which must not be six linked like mine. I just got a six link because I could, but otherwise it is a chevron's wrappings. This obviously makes it so that all chaos damage cannot bypass energy shield. It also gives us a huge chunk of lightning resistance and energy shield too, which is really, really powerful for the build. And then obviously, because we are running three large clusters in our skill tree, we have to optimize them as much as possible. So the way that you can craft them yourself instead of buying them for ridiculous amounts of uh, money is to pretty much just uh, alteration spam until you get increased effects and then use an orb of augmentation, pretty much pray for attributes or maybe energy shield or anything that's pretty much beneficial, but the most powerful one will be minions have increased attack and cost speed. See over here, we got cold rays. So then you can just slam a uh, regal on it and hope that you do not get one of the keystones. Otherwise you have to start over again. You can also um, chaos spam, but I would not recommend chaos spamming it as landing the 25% mod with anything decent is pretty unlikely. And also, if you do land a really good regal, you can always just exalt slam the jewel in hopes of gaining some extra stats or armor or whatever you may be seeking in the build. Okay, so while we are speaking of jewels, just really quickly, um, your elegant hubris, which is commissioned to commemorate Kadiro specifically, must be placed over here, just on top of the uh, witch area for the Supreme Decadence Keystone, whereby your life recovery from flasks also applies energy shield. This is how we get our life flask to apply to our energy shield. That is a really, really, really good keystone for this build. And then what makes it even more powerful having the Elegant Hubris slotted over here is that you can get some nodes which have got Slumlord giving minions 80% increased damage um, per node. Obviously, you will have to go and um, jump around and have a look at the different numbers and combinations in Path of Building to see which has got the most slum, load, slum lord nodes. And if you do happen to come around with getting one that's got like three or four of these nodes, I highly recommend to drop an entire large cluster, preferably this one over here, or even this one is actually better, seeing as though losing the elemental damage won't be such a train smash. And then obviously we have got eternal resilience here. This can be on any of the three nodes too. Uh, it is pretty much randomized. I just have this for the extra physical mitigation, which is really, really good, but it is not necessary. And just the very last thing to note over here, the watches are, you must have the modifier. You have got phasing while affected by haste. The reason why this is very beneficial for the build is so that you don't get stuck in between enemies while you're running from pack to pack. It just makes the gameplay 10 times smoother. It's a really cheap jewel and you can replace it with any other one which you see fit to the build itself. I just found this to be very comfortable for the build. Okay, so with that out of the way, we can quickly go over the uh, skill gems right here. So in your Arakali's Dagger, you want to have melee physical damage with multi-strike and unbound ailments. In the Helmet, you'll want Wither linked to multiple totems and spell totems. What this does is it enables you to put down up to three totems that will inflict Withered on enemies. The 15 stacks do stack up within about four to five seconds, having all three totems up. So it allows you to deal 90% increased uh, chaos damage. And then I just slotted in my Divine Eye here. 
and in my shield, very important, you must have gray socketed here along with your determination and your purity of elements in order to uh, reserve all of your life. The other important thing that I do just want to note is that when you do do this, you will not be able to reserve all of your life. And in order to reserve all of your life, you will need a corrupted jewel, which has got 2% increased reservation efficiency of skills. Mana reservation efficiency does not apply to life in this instance. So getting one of these jewels is very, very, very good in order for you to slot in all three of these auras. Right, and then in my boots, I've just got Flesh Offering and Molten Shell linked to increased duration. Uh, pretty self-explanatory there. And then I'll just slot it in my Desecrate here randomly. In my gloves, I've got the uh, three curses, which we use for bossing, which is our uh, Despair, our Punishment, and our Enfeeble linked to Arcanus Brand. The reason why I'm using Arcanus Brand is because self-casting three curses after already having like four or five buttons to press is pretty troublesome and this solved the issue for me no problem um obviously during bossing you'll want to just hit your writhing jar um when uh, like two seconds after using arcanist brand just to ensure that the curses do go up as it does destroy your mana pretty quickly right and then obviously you've got temp chains in the profane proxy and in your body armor is the next important thing for your auras you must have a level three in latin in order to fit everything comfortably and linked to the level three in latin must be your skitterbots the discipline your haste and lastly your malevolence aura too and then of course i have just got flame dash socketed here as well because uh i kind of struggled with the uh sockets Right, last but not least, of course, is our uh, Quicksilver Flask over here for speed. That is going to increase armor on it. Our Granite Flask for the huge amount of uh, extra armor and evasion rating, along with our Jade Flask, once again, for a lot of evasion rating and the reduced effect of curses on you, which is very well paired with the uh, Mastery, which gives another 20%. So you have 80% less effect of curses on you. Really, really, really cool stuff. And that's it for this one. Thank you everyone for your support, especially my members. It's highly appreciated, boys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream exile.